Um, this is our uh, continuation of the of the section in 7.4 that we did not finish and so I'm just going to cover the last page of your handout so turn to page 3 right now an application of logarithmic functions is what we're going to just have is um, one word problem Okay, in chemistry, the pH of or the pH of a solution is defined as the negative the log of H3O plus, where H3O plus is the hydronium hydronium ion concentration in moles per liter. Solutions with a pH less than seven are said to be acidic, while those of a pH greater than seven are said to be basic. So let's look at our problem here in exercise four. Find the pH of a solution with this concentration. So based on the, you know, on the previous slide, we'll just, all we have to do is, okay, the pH of this solution is equal to the negative of the log of this whole thing, H3O+. Plus. And all you have to do is just plug in this number in here so it becomes the negative of the log of 5.72 times 10 to the negative 6 so really all you have to do is just enter all this information in your calculator don't forget to put a negative in the front okay and you will have that this is equal to 5.24 and that is if they said to enter uh, with two decimal places for your estimator your approximation and that's the end of section 7.4 so we now proceed to section 7.5 okay in section 7.5 what we'll do is we'll be solving exponential and logarithmic equations but before we do that you have to make sure that you can a switch back and forth between an exponential expression and a logarithmic expression or equation so that if x is equal to a to the y that means that if we take the log of x to base a it's equal to y so the best thing to do here is to practice solving a uh, um, logarithmic equation and writing in exponential form or if you're given an exponential equation write it in log so so that you can get used to the way they relate or the way they're equivalent to each other. Now all these three is just a reminder of all the properties that we have back in such 7.4 where we used a table. So if you have the log of a product xy then it's equal to the log of x plus the log of y. And remember for you to be able to um, remember what to use when you have a quotient is that this uh, division becomes the minus sign here so the log of x over y is equal to log of x minus the log of y and if you take the log of x raised to the r it's equal to r times the log of x that means you can bring down that uh, exponent r here in the front of the log expression okay exponential equations this means that you have unknowns in the exponents so how do you solve it? First, isolate the exponential expression. Okay, so make sure that's the first thing you need to do. Take the natural log of both sides. Simplify. Solve for x. State the answer as an exact, exact expression or and or a decimal approximation. And make sure you read the, the instructions carefully when you're working on your homework. If it says two decimal places, just do two decim decimal places. Okay. Here is an example of a problem where you're asked to solve for x and you see that the unknown is in the exponent and there is no way that we'll be able to write 30 as a base 5. That's why we can't use the first things we were doing in section, either you know, in the previous sections in chapter 7 because you, can't, you can no longer have the same base. So if you can't express it as the same base then you can't set the exponents equal to each other but there's a way out there and the, the first thing is we've isolated already an exponential expression on one side so the step two says to solve for or rather take the natural log it could be the log of both sides or the natural logarithm either one works so suppose we just take 
um, how about the natural log of both sides? Okay, remember we, you can either take the log or the natural log of both sides. So let's take the log or natural log of both sides. Okay, so let's do that. This becomes the natural log of 5 x to the negative x 5 raised to the x minus 1 equal to the natural log of 30. Okay, and see what this does is you can use the power property to bring down this whole exponent that we have here. So when you bring this whole thing down, it becomes x minus 1 times the natural log of 5 equal to the natural log of 30. And we're almost done. Okay, remember we want to solve for x. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by the natural log of 5. Okay, and then that cancels this out. So you have an x minus 1 is equal to the natural log of 30 divided by the natural log of 5. And the last step would be adding 1 to both sides and there you get the value of x. So x is equal to the natural log of 30 divided by the natural log of 5 plus 1. Now this is what we call the exact solution. So this is the exact answer. And once you plug it in the calculator, then it becomes an approximation. And this is approximately equal to 3.11. So it depends what Hawks asks you if they ask for an exact answer, you give this. If it gives asks for the approximate uh, solution, then and whatever decimal places, if it says four decimal places, put four. Here it's two decimal places. So find out what Hawks would ask of. Okay? Alright. Now in exercise two, what we've got is we've got a coefficient of um E here, the natural E. So the first thing we need to do is to divide both sides by 4. So let's divide both sides by 4 because we've got to isolate an exponent. And you see that we that's the only way we can bring down that uh, unknown 3x, the variable x. So when we divide both sides, this becomes, so that cancels out, and uh, 144 divided by 4 Okay, so that's just equal to, let's see, e to the 3x is equal to, uh, if you divide 14 by 4, you get 3. So it's 36, right? And then now you've isolated the exponent on one side. So the next thing we do is take the natural log of both sides. So we take the natural log of e to the 3x. Whenever you get, you see an exp uh, a natural e in the equation, always take the natural log. Okay, why? Recall that whenever we have the natural log of e to anything that sits here, it's always whatever that is. Okay, so the natural log therefore of e to the 3x is equal to 3x. So it's almost like this gets knocked out and it, this just drops there. Okay, so we like to take the natural log of both sides if you have an natural e expression in your equation. Okay, so that means that gets knocked out. This is just 3x is equal to the natural log of 36. And then the last step is divide both sides by 3. So x is equal to, exactly equal to the natural log of 36 divided by 3. Okay, there is a warning here. When you um, once you get this, the approximate value is 1.19. Now, note, and warning as well, okay, it's also a warning not to do this, that the natural log of 36 divided by 3 is not equal to the natural log of 12. Because, in fact, what's the natural log of 12? It's equal to 2 point, approximately equal to 2.48. See, they're not the same, so please do not you cannot uh, divide or cancel out 36 over 3 because the natural log of 36 is a single term. Okay, they're not natural natural log times 36. No, it's the whole uh, expression. It's just this is just one single term natural log of 36. Okay, 
So make sure this is already a final answer. Don't simplify that. Uh, in exercise 3, we've already have isolated um, exponents on both sides and see how the unknown, the x variable, is on the, in the uh, exponent. So with this different basis, we can express this as the same basis, then we take the natural log of both sides or the log again. So how about this time let's do log. So take the log of both sides. So we take the log of both sides and what do we get? It's the log of 7 to the 3x minus 1 equal to the log of 3 to raised to the x minus 2. And do you see why we always have to take the log so that we can bring down the exponents and that's where the x is. That's the x variable that we want to solve for. So that will bring it down. Bring it down. And so you're going to have 3x minus 1 multiplied by the log of 7 is equal to x minus 2 times the log of 3. Now you, when you're here, what's the next step? Now remember that log of 7 is just a constant set similarly with log of 3. So just distribute these uh, logs into the parentheses. That way you can put all the x's together on one side and the other constant on the other side. So let's do that. Let's distribute. Okay, so that means this becomes 3x times the log of 7 minus 1 times log of 7, which is just the log of 7, equal to, okay, again, apply distributive law, so it'll be x times the log of 3 minus 2 times the log of 3. Now that we have those x, term, x terms right here, those are the ones that you want to combine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put add log of 7 to both sides. Okay, add log of 7 to both sides. And then subtract uh, x log of 3. So minus log of uh, x log of 3 minus x log of 3, which means these gets canceled. These cancel out each other so now all the x terms are on one side so we've got 3x log of 7 okay that's that term minus x log of 3 then what's equal to the other side well you have that positive log of 7 so let me go ahead and write log of 7 in the front because it has a it's positive minus don't forget this one 2 log of 3 and we are almost there because now that all the x's are one side we can pull it out as a common factor so it's common in both of these terms so let's pull out the x and what's left is 3 times the log of 7 minus the log of 3 and we are almost done because what do we have okay the last step is just dividing by whatever has been multiplied to um, x. So this whole thing right here. Okay, so divide. You've got 3 log of 7 minus the log of 3. And this is now, and of course this cancels out, and this is the exact answer right here. It's your exact answer. And once you enter all of this, all of these in your calculator, what do you get? You'll get the negative, so it's approximately equal to the... It's approximately equal to negative 0 0.53. And that can easily be checked if you plug in this, this answer right here. In here, you should get an equality. Now what about if what you've got is uh, the unknown is in the logarithmic um, expression. So logarithmic equations, how do we solve them? It says there that the first thing you need to do is to condense the logarithmic expression on one side. So in other words, if there's a sum of logarithmic expressions, you have to 
uh, express them as a product. If there's a difference, you have to express them as a quotient. Rewrite logarithmic ex equation in exponential form. Then solve for x. Now, here is the most important step. Check your answer because if in the process of doing all these steps, one, two, three, you got a, a solution from whatever you did, the thing is that you cannot take the log of a negative number because the domain of the logarithmic function is just uh, for x is strictly greater than 0. So let's try a problem and see what we could do. Okay, you've got the log of x minus 5 to the base 2 is equal to 3. And here you only have a single logarithmic expression on one side. So We've already skipped, uh, we've already done step one. So the next thing we need to do is to rewrite this whole thing, okay? Rewrite this whole thing in exponential form. Now, how do you do that? Well, this is, this can be written, therefore, as you'll say, you'll see that x minus 5, okay? So the next thing you have to do is write in exponential form, okay, in exponential equation form. So when you do that, you're saying that if I raise the base 2 to the third, then I get x minus 5, because these two are equivalent to each other, which means that takes, that means you've already almost have solved for x, because the last step would be that's just equal to 8. So x minus 5 is equal to 8, therefore x is equal to 13. Which easily checks out the last steps. Step 4 says to check. Well, where do you check? Always to the uh, plug x on the original in the original equation. So you take the log of 13 minus 5, okay, to base 2 and find out is that equal to 3? Well, 13 minus 5 is 8, so the log of 8 indeed is equal to 3. So that checks out. So this is a solution to your logarithmic equation. See, it's always asked you to check the answer, and we just did that. Okay, exercise 5. What is this? You've got two log expressions. Now the first thing we need to do is to condense. So condense one side. If you need to do that on the other side, do that as well. Okay, so that means we'll have to write this because of the plus, that's the same as saying that it's the log of x minus 3 times x minus 2. So you gotta condense them as much as you can to the rate to is equal to 2. Okay, now what's the next step? Well, write it in exponential. If there is no base, what is understood to be the base, it should be 10, which I would write here because, right, because now you can write it in exponential form. So write it in exponential equation. And what is the exponential equation? It says that if I take this one, x minus 3 times x minus 2, it is equal to what? 10 squared. That's the equivalent exponential form of this equ uh, logarithmic equation. Okay, what is it? The base raised to the second power is equal to this whole thing. So what we need to do now is to um, FOIL. So x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 100. Right? And then what's the next thing? Well, this is just now a an, um, an quadratic equation, and to solve for a quadratic equation, we have to set it to 0. Okay, set to 0, so we've got x squared minus 5x plus 6 minus 100 is equal to 0 because you add, added negative 100 to both sides. Okay, so you've got x squared minus 5x minus 94 is equal to 0. And no way can we find, this is not factorable, so what do we do? Use quadratic formula. So a is 1, b is negative 5, c is negative 94. 
So x is equal to, let's remind ourselves, what is the formula for the quadratic formula? It's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so that is all we'll have to do now is just to write this as x is equal to, okay, You've got a negative 5, so it becomes positive 5, plus or minus the square root of the negative 5, when you square it, becomes 25, minus 4 times 1 times negative 94. Okay, when you put that everything in your calculator, and it's 2 times 1, that'll just be equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 401, divided by 2. Now if we write all that, let me put it here, that way we know what we're doing. Okay, it's a continuation. So x, after you plug everything in your calculator, is approximately equal to 12.51 and another one is negative 7.51. Now once you check it and plug it in here, you see that you're going to have a negative on both of these so that means you can't use this this is like your extraneous root okay so your only solution would be approximately 12.51 so what is that equivalent here it's the 5 plus the square root of 401 divided by 2 so remember always check it's really important that you check because if you have done all these steps and you write both answers then the whole you you'll get a wrong you'll not you won't get any credit or you won't get certified because you chose to include this which is an extraneous root okay so remember you can take the log of a negative number all right now here i'm going to show you another trick that works as well okay here is um a log, a natural log. So remember when you want to condense and there's a difference between them, it, it's, it has to be a quotient. So what we have is, so the solution is condense. So let's go ahead and write the left side is the natural log of 2x minus 5 over x, okay, and it's equal to the natural log of 3. Now let me show you a trick that always works. Now recall that if I have e to the natural log of anything, let's say b, it's always equal to b. So e to the natural log of whatever sits here, it's just what's that thing, it's almost like they cancel out each other. Now if you have this situation, okay, this is this case where you have both the natural log on both sides. Now we want to get this. We want to extract the x here. So what we can do is raise both sides with base e. Okay, so it's going to be e. Right. So when that happens, it's like, oops, everything gets canceled out. So you have 2x minus 5 is equal over x is equal to... 3. Now let's go ahead and solve for x. So you multiply both sides by the x. Remember x cannot be 0 so it's okay to solve both sides by x. So we've got 2x minus 5 is equal to 3x. Okay and then what's next? Well we have to um, I guess take off 2x from both sides. So we see that x is equal to negative 5. Now, is this a solution? That's their next question. Is that a solution? Well, go ahead and plug in negative 5 into here. What's going to happen? That's going to be negative. Similarly here, negative. So this is not a solution. So your answer would be no solution because this can't be a solution because it's negative. So there is no solution to this equation. Now let me show you another trick. Again, this is case-to-case -case basis, but just let me show you. We do the same thing. Okay, so another way, another way. Okay, 
another way is that condense, all right, condense. So you have, let me show you, it'll be the natural log of 2x minus 5 over x is equal to the natural log of 3. Okay, because the natural log as a function is one to one, if the, you have two natural logs equal to each other, that means their arguments are equal to each other. So it's like you can drop these natural log and just say that 2x minus 5 over x is equal to 3. And you you know you do the same steps, you get your you're down to the same steps. So that's another way of looking at it. Okay. I can show you another way as well. So it's really um up to you guys. That, well, how about if I just show you another way? Okay. See if we combine everything, all right, if we combine everything, we'll have you get the same thing. So another way. Suppose we put all the natural log on one side, so we'll have the natural log of 2x minus 5 minus the natural log of x minus the natural log of 3 equal to 0. What does that give us on this side? It'll be the natural log of 2x minus 5 over 3x. You see, because they are all negative. So that means they both belong to the quotient, to the denominator. It's equal to 0. So you have you have isolated this uh, natural log or log expression, and this is understood that the base here is e. So if you rewrite this now as a nat as an exponential, so write it in exponential equation, what happens? You're going to get two x minus five over three x is equal to one because why? Because this is e to the 0, right? How do you express this into exponential form? e raised to the 0 is equal to 2x minus 5 over 3x. So you see, that's equal to 1. So what do you have? You've got the same thing. When you multiply both sides by 3x, you're going to get 3x minus 5 over 3x equal to 1. Multiply both sides by 3x. Okay? Then you uh, 2x right there. So you're going to have 2x minus 5 is equal to 3x. See, you get the same thing. It's just like here. But here you multiply both sides by x. So all in all, you'll still have the same x is equal to negative 5. So here you, you get the same thing, x is equal to negative 5. So I have shown you three ways of solving this equation. Oh, and this is the end of uh, section 7.5. And I guess we're done in section 7.5. Now it's time to do your homework.